That makes a bloody change. I'm going out on a trip. Now listen. Are you listening? You don't go across this road without the assistance of a lollipop man, and that's me. It's nothing coming, though. Now just you listen. I know it might look as though there's nothing coming, but how do you know that a truck or a car isn't going to come speeding out of one of them side roads? Hey? Oh, yeah. I never thought of that. No, I know you didn't. You never do, none of you. That's why the government hired me to look after you all. Tell us. Ah. Where are you going then today? It's somewhere far away. I forget. Are they all going? Only the kids go to progress class. What's that? Well, you don't know what the progress class is. It's Mrs K's class. You go down there in the week. You can't do sums or writing if you're backward like. Oh, Christ, I'll bet she's kept busy. They're all bloody backward round here. I know. Come on, let's want to get there. Just hold it there. There's no one coming. Oh, come on, Les. Hey, got him that time. Arrogant get that one is. sorted out. Right. Now, those who have got permission to come on this trip but who haven't yet paid, I want you to come over here. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, Mr Briggs. Morning. Morning. Come on! <laughs> when was this arranged? Don't talk to me about it. After the last trip of hers, I said no more. Look, complaints from the residents of Derbyshire. Well, how she arranged this, then? Three weeks ago, remember I was away at conference? George Mills approved it in my absence. I saw him this morning, said he wasn't aware of any ban on remedial department outings. It'll have to be cancelled. If I cancel it, she'll resign. Good. The school would be better off without her. There's not many of her type about, you know. By and large, I reckon she does a good job. She keeps them well out of the way, playing with their reading machines and plasticine. It's just when she gets let loose with them. Right. I'll go with her. Brian, you know it's a trip for the progress class. Oh, oh, Alright, miss. We used to be in a progress class, though. But you're not now, Brian. Now you can read and write. You're back in normal classes. Look, Brian, you know I'd take you, but it's not up to me. Who's your form teacher? Briggsy. Well, you have to go and get his permission. Oh, you're it, miss. Brian! Bring a note. What for, miss? Because I wasn't born yesterday, Brian Riley, and if I don't ask you to bring a note, you'll just hide behind the corner for ten minutes and say you said you could go. As if we do a thing like that, miss. <laughs> yes. Miss, where are we going? Oh, come on, Miss Dunga's just told you. Conway, we're going to Conway. Is that in England, day? <laughs> it's in Wales, Carol. Well, we have to get a boot. <laughs> we're going on a coach. Look, it's there. You can get on now. Go on, you can all get on now. Right, just stop there. Don't move. This is me to get on. Oh, did she now? Yeah. Well, let me tell you lots something now. 
Miss isn't the driver of this coach. I am. And if I say you don't get on, you don't get on. Is anything wrong, driver? Are these children in your charge, madam? Yes. Well, you haven't checked them, have you? Checked them? Checked them for what? Chocolate and lemonade. We don't allow it. I've seen it on other coaches, madam. 52 vomiting kids. It's no joke. I'm sorry, but we don't allow that. Here comes the sadness. All right, driver, I'll check them for you. Now, listen, everyone. If anybody's brought any chocolate or lemonade, I want you to put your hands up. They are, driver. All right. No, it's not all right. You can't just take their word for it. They have to be searched. You can't just believe, kids. Can I have a word with you, driver, in private? What's your name, driver? My name? You don't usually have to give me a name. Oh, come on. What's your name? Suckling. Ronnie Suckling. Well, Ronnie, take a look up these streets. Ronnie, would you say that these were the sort of streets that housed prosperous parents? We only usually do the better schools. All right, you don't like these kids. I can tell that. But do you have to cause them so much pain? Well, have I done? I only told them to wait. Ronnie, the kids with me here today don't know what it is to look at a bar of chocolate. Lemonade never touches their lips. These are the children, Ronnie, that stand outside shop windows in the pouring rain, looking and longing and never getting. Even at Christmas. At Christmas time, when your kids from the better schools are opening presents and singing carols, these kids are left outside to wander the cold, cruel streets. Yeah, hey, son. Run to the shops and get what sweets you can with that. What did you do? Lied like hell, of course. <laughs> now, will you listen, everyone? Listen! We'll be setting off for Conway in a couple of minutes. Yeah! Now, listen, we want everyone to enjoy themselves. So, let's not have any silly squabbling or doing anything that might be dangerous to yourselves or to others. That's the only rule we've got today. Think of yourselves, but think of others as well. Miss, miss, well, come on, wait you, miss. Brian, he said it's all right. Where's the note? He didn't give us one, miss. He's coming as well, he said to wait. He's coming to keep an eye on us. Make sure we don't enjoy ourselves. Oh, well, we'll just have to deal with them the best way we can. Right, punks, move. Why? Because we claim the back seat, that's why. You're not even in progress, though. We used to be, though, so move. Yeah, respect your elders. Riley, Dixon, sit down. Sit, I was just trying to get Sit down now. Place. Come on, move. Go on, show yourselves out. We've got some real bright sparks here, Mrs. Gay. The right bunch. Well, I think we'll be safe now you've come to look after us. There's a few of them I could sling off right now. Oh, you're coming with us then? The boss thought it might be a good idea if you had an extra member of staff. Right, listen. We don't want you to think that we don't want you to enjoy yourselves today. Because we do. But a lot of you won't have been on a school visit before, so you won't know how to enjoy yourselves. So I'll tell you. To enjoy a coach trip, we sit in our seats. We don't wander up and down the aisle. We talk quietly to our neighbour, not shout at our mates four seats down. Are you listening, girl? We look nicely out of the windows at the scenery. 
and we don't do anything else. Don't worry. I've driven behind school coaches in my car and I've seen it. A mass of little hands raised in two-finger gestures to the passing cars. Yes. But we won't do that, will we? <coughs> will we? No, sir. No, sir, we won't. God, I've got loads. Where have you been? Sweets, sir. Sweets? Thank you, Morris. Sweets? Excuse me. Have a word with you, please. Yes? The thing is, about these kids, they're like little souls, lost and wandering the cruel out of the streets. Are oh, you getting on with Missy, eh, sir? We saw you, sir. Go to the pub with her. Did you? Yeah. Are you in love with her, sir? Are you? All right. You've all got your sweets, have you? Says in love. love. Hey, he's in love. love. Watch it, Brian. What? You know what? Ah, he is in love with you, though, isn't he, miss? Hey, miss. I bet he wants to marry you. You'd be better off with me, miss. I'm better looking. And I'm sexier. Brian. Little boys shouldn't try to act like men. The day might come when the world will put to the test. Any day, miss, well, any day. What did she say? She said she fancied me. Very good. Meg, very good. I've got a right head case of a driver. He's at the front, so I'll keep Dixie. Come on, we're all right, right, son. Harry, you good ciggies. I want to tell Miss. Shut up, you. I'll open that friggin' window. No, I want to tell Miss. Go and tell her. She won't do nothing anyway. I'll tell Sir. You do, and I'll gob you. Come on, open that window, you. Why? What do you think? So we can get a bit of fresh air? Well, there's no fresh air around here. You just want to smoke, and smoking stunts your growth. What's done your friggin' growth if you don't get it open? I won't go in for you, Ali. Sorry. Just a ciggy. Get your own ciggies. All right, go on. I'll go in the for you. You can buy one off us. Can't have any money. Of course you've got money. Your mum and your mary still have any. Go away. Your mum's loaded. No, she's not. Well, she should be. All those fellas she fucks up a pally. Go on. Just see. She's always with the blacks after boat you on that. And they've loaded them blacks out. And he must have money, because they pay a fortune for a bit of white. Well, I've got no money, honest. Well, you've got no ciggies either. I'll give it up, he's there, he's one ciggy. What's on him? Jam. I hate jam. Put it out. Say there was. Put it out! Now, get to the front of the coach. Say there was just... I said get to the front, lad. Was it yours, Siggy Riley? Sir, swear on me mother. Don't believe him, sir. How can he swear his mother? She's been dead for ten years. All right, all right. We don't want any argument. There'll be no more smoking if I still be here, will there? <sighs> sir. Isn't that to play, miss? Hmm? You know, all the thing you like, the dirt and that. I like them nice places. Which places? You know, them places on the telly. With have gardens and trees outside and that. You've got trees in Pilot Street, haven't you? Which is after the last balmy night. The kids chopped them down and burnt them all. Miss, you know when I grow up, Miss, you know if I work hard and lay in house for ease and that, would you think I'd be able to live in one of them nice places? Well, you could try, couldn't you, love, eh? Yeah. 
Now just look at that over there. What? What? Can't you see? Look, those buildings. Don't you ever bother looking at what's around you? It's only the docks, eh? You don't get buildings like that anymore. Just look at the work that must have gone into that. Do you like it down here, sir? I'm often down here at weekends, taking photographs. Are you listening, Riley? There's a wealth of history that won't be here much longer. <clears throat> My old man works down here, sir. And what's he think about it? He hates it. What? His job or the place? Oh, the old lot. Well, you tell him to stop and have a look at what's around him. Yes, you might see things a bit differently then. <laughs> the Wales is cracker. Linda Croxley! What? You mean you've never really been to Wales? What sort of outfit's that for a school visit? What? Don't you what me, young lady? You know very well that on school visits you wear school uniform. Well, Mrs. K never said nothing about it. You're not talking to Mrs. K. Yeah, I know. Now, listen here, young lady. I don't like your attitude one bit. What if I said you haven't said nothing yet, have I? I'm talking about your attitude. Now, I'm telling you now. Carry on like this and you'll be spending our time in Conway inside this coach. I don't care. I don't want to see no crappy castle anyway. Count yourself lucky, madam, that you're not a lad. Now, I'm warning you, Miss Croxley. Cause any more unpleasantness on this trip and I'll see to it that it's the last one you ever go on. Is that understood? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it better had be. Right, what's your name? Wake up! Jimmy. What's your name? McNally, sir. Right, McNally, go and sit at the back. Sir, what for? Never mind what for, just do what you're told, lad. Right, move up. How long have you been smoking, Andrews? Since I don't smoke. Say, since I was eight. How old are you now? Thirteen, sir. What do your parents say? Say, my mum says nothing about it. But when my dad comes home, say, say, he belts me. Because you smoke? No, sir, because I don't give him one. Y your father goes to sea, does he? Well. Sir. Well, you said when he comes home. I thought you meant he was away a lot. Oh, he is, sir. But he doesn't go to sea. What's he do then? I don't know, sir. He just comes round every now and then as a barney with my mum. Then he goes off again. I think he's trying to get money off her. But she won't give him it, though. She hates him. He all hates him. Listen, why don't you promise yourself that you'll give up smoking? You must realise it's bad for your health. Sir, I do, sir. I've got a terrible cough. Well, why don't you pack in, then? Sir, I can't. Thirteen and you can't stop smoking? Oh, no, sir. Well, you'd better not let me catch you again. No, sir. I won't. Right, lads. Shouldn't be too long before we get into Wales now. Wales? That's in the country, isn't it, sir? A lot of it's countryside, yes. Lots of woods, eh, sir? Well, woods, mountains, lakes. Uh, and you're going to show Mr. Woods, are you, sir? <laughs> now, just watch it, Brian, all right? 
Oh, I only remember you're going to show the tree. I know quite well what you've meant. And if I was you, I'd put that fag out before you burn your hand. If Mr. Briggs catches it, you'll spend the rest of the day down the front with him, and you don't want that, do you? Now, come on, put it out. I'll show Mr. Woods for you, sir. <laughs> Ronnie, I was just wondering, is there somewhere round about here we could stop and let the kids stretch the legs a bit? Uh, tell you what, Mrs. Kay, there's a few cafes further on a bit. Do you want me to pull into one of them? Smash it. Better get some caps ready, Mrs. Roberts. There's a coach coming. Oh? Probably pensioners so early in the season. Oh, I shouldn't think so. Let me see. Now, the folk who run these places provide a good and valuable service to travellers like us. So remember what I've said. Right. Coach party places. But they're only children. Oh, don't be soft. <laughs> Now then, let's have a straight line, in twos. Come on, you lot, get in line. You two, Riley, get in line. Mr. Briggs, I, I think, think it's under control, Mrs. Kay. Come on, cut the moving around. Just stand there, straight. That's more like it. <laughs> Run, son, lad! Get back into line! Mr. Briggs, it's I... all right, Mrs. Kay. No, just where do you think you are, lad? Well? Is it Wales? <laughs> <laughs> Straight line, a wonderful thing to behold. With organisation, Mrs. K. With organisation, it can be done. Right. Two at a time. Stop! I said stop! Stop! Oh, let's go and have some coffee out of my flask and forget about the kids for a while. <laughs> 24. The chocolate bars are 24. That's robbery. Oh, There's only 12 pence down our way. And you get stamps as well. Because one of them up there. Here! Put that down, don't touch. Maybe your teachers, I should be here in here with you. We've all gone down the woods. Isn't it nice to get away from them for a few minutes? To be quite honest, Mrs Kay, I think we should all be inside looking after them. Oh, leave them. They've been cooped up for over now. They want to stretch the legs and let off a bit of steam. Hey, yeah, put that on. Keep your hands off. How much your bounty is? Easy. Easy. Now, just a minute now. Give me that hand. Give me the other hand. Come on, put it over there. Here, give it to me. Are you actually little thief, you? I've done that. That's before you bunny choose. Tuppence, skip. Take your hands off. What's the call? One penny shoes? Yes, they're called penny shoes, but they cost two pence each. Well, they should be called two penny shoes, shouldn't they? They're not called two penny shoes. They're called penny shoes and they cost two pence, right? I hope you realise this represents a serious breach of the Trade Descriptions Act. And I hope you realise that if you don't shut up, there'll be a serious breach of your head. Do you sell chips? No! Oh, off! Off! There's not just our school to think of, you know. There's the others who come after us, and they're dependent upon the goodwill of the people who run these places. Considering the profit they make out of the kids, I don't think they've got much to complain about. There are times when I really think you're on their side. I didn't ask you to come on this trip. No, but the headmaster did. <laughs> oh, we must have taken more in the last five minutes than we've taken in the old man. Yes. All we do now is count the winnings. Come to 
justify me, are you? Justify you, sir? Come and sit by me. Come and sit down at the front, thanks, Karen. You see? What, Linda? Come here, I want to tell you something. Well, go on. What is you say? I don't know if you want to hear. Come on, just sit here while I tell you. Go on, say. She won't bite you. Come on, say. Well, what is it? <laughs> You're not going to tell me a joke, are you? <laughs> Look, Linda, I'll have to go. Well, oh, see, listen, listen. She said I wouldn't tell you, but I will. I said I think you're lovely. Linda! <laughs> I told him, I said to what? Oh, God, he's a sim, isn't he? He's got no chance. He's going with Miss. Might chuckle, though. Might go with me. Might marry me. Oh, don't be stupid, you. You'll never get an husband like Sir. You don't up marrying someone like you. I fell you. I'm just jealous, you girl. Right. You know what her problem is, don't you? Hmm? Yeah, she thinks I can't see through all this woolly minded liberalism. You know what I mean? I mean, all right, she has her methods and I have mine, but. I don't see why she has to set herself up as the, the great champion of the non-academics, can you? It might look like love and kindness, but... Well, if you ask me, I don't think it does the kids a scrap of good. I think you have to risk being disliked if you're going to do anything for these types of kids. They've got enough freedom at home, haven't they, with the two-quid pocket money and television till all hours, haven't they? I don't know what you think, but uh, I think her philosophy's totally confused. What do you think? Actually, I don't think it's got anything to do with the philosophy. Well, you mean you haven't noticed all this anti-establishment, just let the kids roam while don't check them sort of attitude? Yes, of course I've noticed it, which is like that all the time. This trip isn't organised according to any staff <laughs> theory. Well, what is the method she works to, then? I mean, you tell me, you know her better than I do. The only principle behind today is that the kids should have a good day out. Well, that's all I'm saying. But if they're going to have a, a good and stimulating day, then it's got to be planned and executed better than this. What's this? Where are we? Where are we? Oh, it's all right, Mr Briggs. I've checked with the driver. Thought it'd be a good idea if we called in at the zoo for now. We've got plenty of time. But I thought this trip was organised so that the kids could see Conway Castle. Oh, yes, we'll be going to the castle after. Now, listen, everybody. As a sort of extra bonus, we've decided to call in here and let you have an hour at the zoo. Yay! Now, the rest of the staff and myself will be around if you want to know anything about the animals. Mind you, it's not much good asking me because I don't know one monkey from the next. Far from Andrews, miss. He's a gorilla. And yourself, Brian, the orangutan. <laughs> ah, go away, miss. He's a bloody big baboon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not have any silly name calling. Mrs. King. As I was saying, I don't know a great deal about the animals, but we're very lucky today to have Mr. Briggs with us because he's something of an expert in natural history. So, if you want to know anything more about the animals you see, Mr. Briggs will tell you all about them. Come on, then. Leave your things on the coach. Oh, please. Of course they've got ears, you think. <laughs> and so you can see, with those clothes, it could give you a very nasty mark. I'm going to kill you, sir. Well, why do you think it's kept in a pit? I think that's cruel, don't you? No, not if it's treated well. And don't forget, it was born in captivity, so it won't know any other sort of life. I bet it does, sir. How do you know? Sir's just told you, hasn't he? If it was born in a pit and it's lived all its life in a pit, well, it won't know anything else, so it won't want anything else, will it? Well, why does it kill people then? What's that got to do with it? 
It kills them because they're cruel to it. They keep it in the pit, so when it gets out, it's bound to be mad and want to kill people, don't you see? Say, these turks have to shut up. I'm not thick. If it has lived there all its life, it must know, mustn't it, say? Know what? Say, these nuts. It must know about other ways of living, say, you know, <sighs> free. Like the way people have stopped it living. It only kills people because it's trapped. And people are always stood looking at it. If it was free, it wouldn't bother people at all. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Ronson. Says right. Bears kill you, couldn't send them to kill you. All right, say, let's go to the children's zoo. Let's go to the big ones. All right, we'll get round them all eventually. Say, are we going to the children's zoo, then? If you want to. Come on, Mum. <laughs> oh, God, the size of it. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. Martha? Look, see, it's easy. No! Don't walk properly. Oh, they sit all the other teachers like you linked them. <laughs> oh, hello. How are you getting on? They've been flying you with questions. Yes, they've uh, they've been very good. I'm just going for a cup of coffee. Do you want to join me? Well, I was just on my way to the children's zoo with these. It's all right, sir. We'll go on our own. Oh, come on. They'll be all right. Well, I don't know whether these people can be trusted on their own, Mrs K. They'll be all right. Colin and Susan are walking round. The place is walled in. They'll be all right. Go on, sir. You go and get a cuppa. You can trust us. Ah, uh, can I, though? If I go for a cup of coffee with Mrs K, can you people be trusted to act responsibly? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, Mrs K. We'll trust them to act responsibly. That's sir. it. Go on. Ev Everton. 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 Go on, just tweet it out. You dislocated sparrow. Speak. Uh, how many sugars, Mrs K? Oh, call me Helen. I don't like being called Mrs. K all the time. Makes me feel so old. Tried to get the kids to call me Helen once. Had the whole class chanting it. Ten minutes later, they were calling me Mrs. K again. No, no sugar, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a man yet. <laughs> Look at them ugly looking creatures. Oh, yeah. no. Just think we used to be them. Look at his pinky wink! <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little joke! <laughs> They're really interested, you know. They're really interested in the animals. Yes, I thought they'd enjoy it here. Aren't they great? Go on, Noon, anyway. These are better, anyway. Perhaps when we're back at school, we could arrange something. Maybe I could come along and give a little talk with some slides that I've got. Ah, oh, would you? Yes, of course. I could pop along during a free period and set up the projector and away we go. time ago. Oh, don't forget you'd never offered before. Tell you the truth, I, I didn't think your kids would be too interested in animals. Ew, it's done in his Don't worry, we'll arrange that as soon as we get back to school. Come round with us, it's a grand little zoo.
couple of hours, Kim. You've had a good time. All on board, then? Yes, we wandered back and most of them were. Oh, well, that makes a change. All checked and present. Right, off we go. supposed to be in charge of this lot. Why? What's the matter? Children. They're not bloody children, they're animals. It's not the zoo out there, it's a bloody zoo in here. Well, look, would you mind controlling your language and telling right. me what's going on? Come on, where are they? What? Call yourselves teachers, you can't even control them. Now look, this has just gone far enough. Would you tell me exactly what you want, please? <laughs> I trusted you, Lot. I trusted you, and this is the way you repay me. I trusted all of you. But it's obvious that trust is something you know nothing about. See, we only bothered him. Shut up, Lot! <laughs> is it any wonder that people won't do anything for you? The minute we start to treat you like real people, what happens? Well, that man was right. You act like animals. Animals! Well, I've learned a lesson today. Oh, yes, I have. I've learned that trust is something you people don't understand. I'm warning you now. Don't expect any more trust from me. Mrs. Kay, when we get to the castle, we'll, uh, we'll split up into four groups and each member of staff will be responsible for one group. Now, you see these larger square holes just below the battlements there? Well, they were used for uh, long planks of wood which supported a sort of platform and that's where the archers used to stand and fire down on the, uh, the attackers of the castle. Now, what's interesting is, if you look at the side of that tower, it's not quite perpendicular. What's perpendicular mean? Sir? Sir? All right, Modern. Straight up, sir. Are you listening, lad? You might learn something. So, although these walls are nearly 15 feet thick in places, you still had the wind blasting in through the arrow slits. With no proper heating, you can imagine just how cold it must have been. So you wonder what they did to keep warm in the olden days? Well, obviously, then. Where's everybody else gone? Where's the others? Sid kept dropping out as you were talking, Sid. Oh, God. It's all right, Sid. We're dead interested. You can keep showing us around. All right, Linda. What was I saying? You were telling us how they kept warm in the olden days. <sighs> they wore much thicker clothing, all right, Linda? Sid, it's dead. It's dead spooky in here, it's haunted, isn't it? Don't be silly. Sir, I'm frightened. Don't do that, Linda. But I'm frightened. Sir, so am I. Now, girls, stop being silly. Stop it. There's nothing to be frightened of. Now, come on. Ah! Sir, what did? What did? What <laughs> <I> did? <laughs> <laughs> Go and look around the castle grounds. You haven't seen it yet. 
Mr. Lanky, it's horrible. I'd sit near with you, looking at the lake. It's not the lake, love. That's the sea. That's what I meant, miss. Miss, wouldn't it be crazy if you had something like this around us? Then the kids wouldn't get into trouble. They'd have someone like this to play, would they? Miss, wouldn't have not like this around our way, could we, miss? Why not? Because then you'd act them, wouldn't we? No, we wouldn't. Well, do you know, that's why we never have nothing nice around our way. Because we smash it up. The copy news, that's so. Why should you waste the money? They'd give them things if we looked after them. But we don't look after them, do we? Hey, miss. Don't no, I think about the name, miss? Go on, John, what do you think? Miss, if all this belonged to us, miss, and it was ours, not the copies, but ours, well, we wouldn't let no one back it, would we, miss? We'd defend it. Right, you two, off. Go on, move. Say where? Anywhere, girl, just move. I want to speak to Mrs K. Oh, come on, then. I was talking to those children. Yes, and I'm talking to you, Mrs. Gay. It's got to stop this, has. What has? What has? Can't you see what's going on? It's a shambles, the whole ill-organised affair. Look what they did at the zoo. Just look at them here. They just left to race and chase and play havoc. God knows what the castle authorities must think. Look, when you bring children like ours into this sort of environment, you can't afford to just let them go free. They're just like town dogs let off the leash in the country. My God, for some of them, it's, a, it's the first time they've been further than Birkenhead. I know. And I was just thinking, it's a shame, really, isn't it, eh? You know, we bring them to a crumbling pile of bricks and mortar, and they think they're in the fields of heaven. You are on their side, aren't you? Absolutely, Mr Briggs, absolutely. Look, all I want to know from you is what you're going to do about this chaos. Well, I'd suggest if you want the chaos stopping, you'd better stop seeing it as chaos. All right, the headmaster asked you to come along, but can't you just relax? There's no point in pretending that a day out to Wales is going to furnish them with the education they should have had long ago. It's too late for them. Most of them were rejects on the day they were born, Mr Briggs. We're not going to solve anything today. Can't we just give them a good day out? At least we could try and do that. Well, that's, a, that's a fine attitude, isn't it? That's a fine attitude for a member of the teaching profession well, to have. Well, what's your alternative, eh? Do you really think there's any point in pretending? Even if you cared. Do you really think you could educate these kids, my remedial kids? Because you're a fool if you do. You won't educate them because nobody wants them educating. Listen, Mrs. K, no, don't you... No, you listen, Mr. Briggs. If these kids and all the others like them had real learning, the factories of England would oh. empty overnight. And don't you try and tell me that there's kids that, given the choice, would still stand on production lines in empty bins. Because that's the biggest myth of all. Give them education. Choice. They'd want what we've got, what the best off have got. And that's why you won't educate them, Mr Briggs. You're in a job that's designed to fail, because no matter what the rest of us want, the factories of England must have their fodder. Well, I suppose that's the sort of stuff you've been pumping into their minds, is it? You really think they'd understand? Listen, I'm not going to spend any more time arguing with you. You may have organised this visit but I'm the one who's been sent by the headmaster to supervise. Now, either you take control of the children in your charge, or I'll be forced to abandon the visit and order everyone home. Well, that's your decision. But I'm not going to let you prevent the kids from having some 